Hello, it is Wednesday, July 26th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Wednesday puzzle, so a midweek, mid-difficulty crossword, with a theme still, of course, and this midweek-themed edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Camtron, Henrik Koskinen, and a new benefactor, the Lake House Bros. I hope I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that in the appropriate manner. It could be Lake House Brothers, Brothers abbreviated. It looks like Lake House Bros as written. So welcome to them. And thank you so much for becoming a benefactor of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, which means you will receive the Daily Solve official Let's Check the Crosses mug. And of course, those benefactors are joined by, as always, Supreme Benefactors, the Indomitable Shoalmaster, and the Incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them, all benefactors of one kind or another of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. They're directly supporting this channel, keeping this series going. For that, I'm incredibly appreciative. Thank you so much to them. Thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign. It does keep the series and this channel going. So thank you for that. And if you'd like to consider supporting the channel in that way, um, just like the Lake House Bros have decided to do, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video. And there you can find the bonus videos available to patrons and that mug, of course, for benefactors. All right. So, um, uh, <laughs> sounds like someone is destroying something in the background here. I don't know if that's coming through the, the microphone. In any case, uh, let's, let's move on. So you can uh, subscribe to the channel on YouTube, of course, as well. That's a big help. Thanks to everybody who's done that. And you can join the Daily Solve Discord chat server via a link in the description field underneath the video. So now let's solve a crossword. This is a debut construction by Mary Crane. So welcome to her with her first New York Times crossword. Um, it was edited, of course, as always by Will Shorts. And it's a Wednesday puzzle that will have a theme. So let's start solving and see what's in store for us today. Organization co-sponsoring a Decide to Ride safety initiative. I'm not familiar with Decide to Ride, but my guess in four letters would be MAD, which stands for Mothers Against Drunk Driving. That's my guess, but let's look at the crosses and see. Land formations from the Spanish for tables, mesas, I would think, which are sort of, um, you know, flat, flat formations that you could imagine um, evoking tables. The way things are going so far... As it looks, or as it's, or as, as it seems like a reasonable beginning. Let's see if that works here. Or maybe not, because French 101 verb, I assume this will be the, the verb, the French equivalent of to be, which is the verb être. So um, maybe not as. Oh, at this rate, at this rate, th the way things are going so far, at this rate, we'll solve this puzzle in a reasonable amount of time. Hearty comfort food could be stew. It makes spider webs glisten dew glistens on on spider webs certainly the case and ideal place to live could be one's dream house i guess first thought it was dream home but a house in particular i guess it could be they use like in a non-valley girl way uh similes so if you're saying something is like another thing that's a, that's a simile um sort of like a metaphor but with like or as although i think people often refer to Similates as metaphors as well, depending on the context in, in sort of ordinary day-to-day -day language. All right. Blank is wasted on the stupid. I don't know. I'm not sure what this is. Yeah, I'm not sure. Psychiatrists, I'm afraid our time is up, question mark. I mean, this will be thematic, and we can see that it's being pointed to by the by the revealer. Should I wait or should I read it now? I haven't, it's been a while since I jumped straight to the revealer, so let's do that. Uh, and it says, end of a race or a hint to the conversation closers. All right, okay. So these are all conversation closers at 18, 26, and 42 across. What did this say again? Psychiatrists, I'm afraid our time is up. A short something? Small as chances, no. Slim chances. Space, one space could be one's room, or you could have extra space, extra room, that kind of thing. Goat slash man of mythology could be a fawn. That's a sort of goat, mythological goat man creature. Not many could be few. Here we have tiny is we, straightforward enough. Crafter's website could be Etsy, where um, people sell handmade, handmade goods. 
Irony is wasted on the stupid. There we go. All right. I was, I wasn't up to the task apparently. Um, maybe it was wasted on me. And uh, psychiatrist, I'm afraid our time is up. Oh, shrink something because a psychiatrist can be referred to slangly as a shrink. Shrink wrap because they're wrapping it up. Okay, there we go. Well, I don't think the revealer really helped me with that, unfortunately. Um, end of a riff. In, oh, finish line. Yes, okay. Finish line is, uh, you could call this a finish line. The sh or, or rather, you could call, I'm afraid our time is up, a finish line, and a sh shrink wrap being a sort of equivalent phrase to finish line. Okay, I don't think in this case the revealer is actually necessarily going to be very helpful to solve these clues because we already sort of got all that information in this clue. I mean, this was quite clearly referring to something the psychiatrist would say to finish or, or wrap up. So, okay, well, there we go. We'll move on. Speed up could be to hasten, maybe. And if one is paying attention to what needs to be done, one is on task. One who prefers only the highest priced things, say a snob, maybe. Let's see if that fits the crosses. A wild guest could be a stab, indeed. What a communion wafer represents with the, the host. Um, certainly, if you're... Uh, uh, that, that is a common commonly used phrase, the host, the communion wafer, in a, in a, in a church communion setting, uh, Eucharist. Okay, Tic Tac is the, those little um, uh, mints, those little, little um, tubular mints. Elsa's sister in Frozen, Anna. Well, there we go. That's been filled out. Lovers, it's not you, it's me. A stock phrase? No, it doesn't fit anyway. Um, not sure. Blue Ribbon Beer. Oh, Pabst, Pabst Blue Ribbon is the is the beer. Because they won an award one time. I find that so funny. There's a seal on Blue Ribbon Beer, and it indicates when they won a blue medal in whatever sort of competition it was. And it's, they've been dining out on that one ever since. Soothing application. Oh, my, my first assumption here would be aloe, but uh, the official medicinal plant of the New York Times Crossword, but I think it's more generally a balm. It could be made with aloe, could be made with something else. I think we can assume, since it's being referenced in the New York Times Crossword, it's it's an aloe balm. We don't know for sure. Sound of shears could be snip, 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 maybe. One of the Jackson 5, Tito Jackson. Um, classic, classic group, the Jackson 5. Um, one of the, some of the greatest, I mean, and ABC, I just think, is one of the most absolutely sort of perfectly constructed pop songs. Anyway, citizen of the oldest independent Arab state, um, an Irani. And, or is it an Irani or an Omani? I would assume Irani. Stoked. No, maybe it's not. Maybe it isn't, because stoked, I think, would be amped. Right, okay, that's interesting. That's a good fact to know. Oman, the oldest independent Arab state. That's really interesting. Okay. Hospital recovery era, uh, post-op area, post, post -oper, oh, post operative or post operation. Uh, lover, it's not you, it's me. Oh, stock split. Oh, I see. Stock be in the sense of this is a sort of generic. It's a stock phrase. It's not you, it's me. It's sort of cliche because it's been used and it's depicted so frequently in film and things like that. So it's kind of a stock split. And a stock split, of course, is also a phrase in its own right that refers to. Um, sort of a, when, um, uh, I guess when a publicly traded company sort of doubles its quantity of stock and then halves the price of each share. So nothing in sort of total has actually changed. Um, but now there are more units of the stock in the world. Some bars have 24 of them, uh, carrots, the bar of 24 carat gold or something like that. Walked on, trod on, Word with sand or Taurus. Taurus trap or sand trap are both phrases. Derby for one or Darby, I guess, but in this case, I think uh, in the U.S. context, we refer to the hat as a derby. Hat. Revolutionary invention. Um, the wheel. Oh, the wheel <laughs> was a revolutionary invention uh, and also literally an invention that revolves, of course. What a guitar gently does in a 1968 Beatles song. It weeps in the George Harrison song, While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Sad trombone. 
So in uh, in brackets, um, they uh, this generally means a sound as opposed to uh, or a representation of a sound rather than a, a sort of you know language verbal speech. So and it's probably wah wah to indicate wah wah that sort of sad trombone sound. And not all those who wander are lost, is a quote by J.R.R. Uh, uh, J. R. R. Uh, Tolkien from. I actually don't know if it's Lord of the Rings or The Hobbits, or The Hobbit, but it's something. Anyway, Roaring Twenties and Swinging Sixties are eras. Simple enough. And comment like, sorry you're upset, gotta run, late for my nail appointment. Um, I'm not very good at these, am I? I don't know. Church lineup could be pews. You could have pews lined up in a church, the rows of seating. And coat that might be satin, question mark. Interesting. A satin coat. I mean, I almost want to read this as coat that might be sat in. But I, I don't think, I don't think the New York Times would do that kind of thing. That, that feels a bit too loose for, for the Will Shorts style. So what is it actually? I'm not sure. Singer uh, Grande, Ari Ariana Grande, that's certainly a name I recognize. And if someone's miles away, they're afar. Lovely Be Beatles girl, lovely Rita Meter Maid is a Beatles song. And if you're privy to something, you're in on it. Partner of Raves could be Rants, as in Rants and Raves, kind of just goes, goes off endlessly about something. Coat that might be set. Oh, paint. You could have satin paint. There we go. So coat of paint. All right. There we go. That, that worked out fine. Not Indeed, not a coat. Coat in which we sat. Uh, make amends is to atone, to, um, you know, to apologize, to make amends. Um, psychics supposedly have uh, six of them, six senses. So the sixth sense being some form of extrasensory perception. Okay. Is this shellac? Maybe you put shellac on, a, on nails, but I don't... I don't know. The, I don't really know what the line would be. Company making tracks. Rail, railroad tracks or tracks. A record label. Not sure. Taking prescription drugs informally. It could be on meds, on medication. The meds being informal, of course. Annual May celebrants. Is Mother's Day in May? How can I not remember that off the top of my head? I think it is. Let's see, mouse. So let's see if that works. Computer accessories, yes, could be mice. Is, com you know, computer mouse. Uh, nailed could be aced as in a test. And if you fall behind, you lag. Uh, salon supply could be gels, hair gels. So the company making trains. Oh, right, okay. I, th I think it is trains because Lionel is a model train company. Are they still around? I assume they probably are. Um, all right, well, what about this? Must have. I need it. Big name in electric cars is probably Tesla here. Designer Wang. Vera Wang is the designer whose name I believe I've seen. Let's see if this V helps. Carpoolers letters. Right. This is HOV, which is in some parts of the U.S. what the carpool lane is called. Some, but not all. And I think it stands for high occupancy vehicle, maybe. Um, all right. Red Hot's candy brand. Uh, red Hots are those little little red sort of spicy candies. First year law student informally, oh, one L. Yes, this is um, the sort of convention that, that law law students use for whatever reason. I don't know what the what the what what is the source of the tradition, but I've certainly encountered it in crosswords before. One L. One whose weight goes up and down. A, a power lifter or something? If you're thinking of somebody lifting weights literally a weightlifter deadlifter maybe they do they're doing deadlifts that would be that would make sense let's check the crosses here 26th of 26 maybe I mean, yeah i mean when i see 26 my first thought is 26 letters of the alphabet so this could be the last letter of the alphabet the z does that so that would make this not lifter, right? Okay, so I don't know what that is. An elevator? I don't know. Situation involving unrequited love. It could be the friend zone, maybe. You have two friends and one of them has stronger feelings, but it's not reciprocated. Memo starter could be four. 
the person to whom it's addressed, maybe? No. Uh, blank manner of speaking, in a manner of speaking. Um, memo starter. Oh, FYI, for your information, that must be the answer. Okay. One whose weight goes up and down. Oh, yoga? No, I don't know. I was really, I really thought it was going to be a lifter originally. 1982 Disney film set inside a computer game. That's Tron, of course. And casual greeting could be Haya, Haya, I guess more, more accurately said. Oh, a yo-yo, one whose weight goes up and down. Yo-yo dieter. Ah, right. Okay. Someone who sort of yo-yos on and off of diets and their weight is fluctuating. I think that's the answer. The Blank Body Problem, problem Hugo Award-winning novel by the Chinese writer Liu uh, Shichin, maybe? Um, the Three-Body Problem. I've certainly heard of this novel. I've never read it. Um, I haven't read much science fiction in my adult life, but I've certainly heard of this. It's a fairly famous, fairly famous book. Snack item that has been made in more than 85 flavors. And, oh, it must be the Oreo. The official, oops, the official snack cookie of the New York Times crossword. And we haven't, in fact, seen it in a while, I don't think. It's been at least a few weeks, I think, since we've had an Oreo in the grid. But it's clearly the answer here. So what was this one? Sorry you're upset. Got to run. Late for my nail appointment. Shallow end? Oh, I see. Is that? Oh, right. I see. Because I, I didn't pick up on the sorry you're upset thing. This is painting a picture of somebody who's, um, uh, their, their friend is in distress or, or, you know, having some sort of problem. And this person's saying, oh, well, it's too bad that you're feeling upset about that. Anyway, I've got to go get my nails done. So you could call that maybe a shallow end to the conversation. And then here, if you're indebted to somebody, you owe them. So is indebted to is owes. And there we go. So there we have it. A, a, it was a theme that was very simple in terms of the um, uh, nature of the theme. Um, argu arguably, you don't even necessarily need the revealer. Oh, and actually, I guess... Yeah, it's funny because the thing about the revealer is that it almost feels as though you could have used the revealer as one more of these theme answers, but I guess it's better as a revealer because finish line is certainly something you could apply to any of these. You could say any of these scenarios described includes a finish line, a line used to finish the conversation or encounter. Um, so there we go. We had our stock split. It's not you, it's me. Our shrink wrap. I'm afraid our time is up from the psychiatrist. And uh, our shallow end. Sorry, you're upset. Got to run late for my nail appointment. All of these, each of these, I should say, is a finish line. And there we go. A very nice, uh, it's a good theme with, with, with a good set of ideas in it. Um, and not very demanding in terms of needing to understand the theme. You just kind of need to understand each pun in its own right, essentially. I suppose it does help to get the revealer a bit. Um, and there we go. A very nice debut construction, I think, from Mary Crane. Not too challenging overall as far as Wednesday crosswords go. Let me know how you fared with it, though. Um, uh, certainly there were cases where there were some specific bits of knowledge here. Um, actually, two Beatles songs. I didn't even pick up on that at the time. Two Beatles songs, the three-body problem, that science fiction novel, um, Farrah Wang, so the Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer, oh, Mad, right. This would be one where I got that right off the bat. Probably if you didn't have a U.S. cultural context, this one would be, it would be meaningless. You'd need all the crosses. Um, so yeah, so definitely some specific knowledge in here. Um, so yeah, let me know how you, how you fared with that one. Oh, Tron. Anyway, that was the crossword for Wednesday. And now, as I suggested yesterday, I am indeed going to read a few clues, a few uh, comments, I should say, from yesterday's crossword. So Gary Britton points something out that I, <laughs> I absolutely understood at the time, but I guess when I think back on it, as he's implying here, I didn't mention this at all. The the kiss and the kiss and makeup clue, which can also be read as kiss and makeup, referring to Gene Simmons, um, of course, is referencing the fact that Gene Simmons, as a member of the band Kiss, was in full makeup during his performance. So kiss and makeup are the things associated with Gene Gene Simmons. And I, I I think I sort of, I just had that in my brain and I never actually said it aloud. So thank you to Gary Britton for pointing that out. 
Uh, John Philpitt corrects me on something that I definitely did misinterpret, which was that turns being associated with the game of horseshoes is not because the horseshoe turns in the air. And in fact, as John Philpitt explains, good tossing form is to start with the open side of the horseshoe facing the target and have it not rotate during the flight. Indeed, the reason the word turns is associated with horseshoes is because the contestants take turns. So that was a much more appropriate association. And uh, that was not the one that popped to mind for me. And finally, this isn't so much a correction. It was just a funny comment. I thought Elliot uh, Goodine says, I had to stop the video to see if Gary Larson, the author of the, the crossword, was the same one from the Far Side comics. I found this interview uh, snippet on cruciverb. So um, cruciverb refers, that that's a word that refers to crosswords. I'm not familiar with that site, but um, cruci for cross and verb for verbal or word. Um, in any case, it must be a, a crossword coverage website. And the interviewer asks, one more question. Are you that Gary Larson, the guy for entertained us, the guy who entertained us for years with the far side, the newspaper comic strip? I know you probably get that a lot, so my apologies. And Gary Larson replies, I am not that Gary Larson. I remember when I first started working as a comedian, I got a fortune cookie that read, your name will be famous in the future. I put that fortune in my wallet and saved it. A few years later, when my name got famous without me, I took it out and burned it. That's extremely good. I just really enjoyed that story. And, uh, and that was it. Those were the comments I had from yesterday's puzzle. Hope you enjoyed uh, today's video and today's puzzle. And I hope you join me tomorrow for the Thursday crossword, where we will take a step up, usually a more noticeable step up in difficulty, and certainly a often a more complex or intricate or interesting theme. So do look forward to that. Um, I always enjoy Thursdays for that reason. Hope you do as well. Join me then. Until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Wednesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.